In this video, I'm going to talk about a, a new operation on vectors, pairs of vectors, called the dot product. So the basic question that this um, operation is uh, designed to answer is the question, given two vectors in Rn, so height n vectors, uh, what is the angle between them? So what exactly does this mean? Well, you can imagine if you have two vectors, v and w, and these are in some n-dimensional space, maybe, maybe three-dimensional space, just so I can draw a picture of it, that these two vectors span a plane. In other words, we can draw a plane, a unique plane, that contains these two vectors. And now we consider the two vectors inside that plane and then we just use the usual definition of angle. So now we imagine them sitting inside that plane and the angle is uh, is the angle between them in the plane. But if someone just gives you two random vectors, v and w, how do you actually compute what that angle is? Well, I'm going to start by making a definition. Um, so the dot product v dot w is uh, a number and it's the number given by taking the first entry of v and the first entry of w, multiplying them, adding that to the first entry, sorry, the second entry of v times the second entry of w, adding that to dot dot dot, all the way up to the nth entry of v times the nth entry of w. Okay, so given two ve vectors v and w, you get a number like this. So here v is v1 down to vn, and, and the same for w. So what's the point of this definition? The point is the following theorem. So v dot w is the length of v, remember I was writing that with as v with two vertical lines around it, times the length of w times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between them. So we're going to prove this theorem in due course. Um, first, I want to just discuss it, work through some examples, um, explore the theorem a little bit. So first example, let's take v to be 1, 0 in the plane and w to be 0, 1. So what is v dot w? Well, we take the first entry of v, that's 1, times first entry of w, that's 0. And we add that to the second entry of v times the second entry of w, that's 0 times 1. So we get 0. So the dot product of these two vectors is, is 0. Let's draw the vectors. It's these two basis vectors. So this is v and this is w. The dot product is zero. Does that make sense? Is that consistent with this theorem? Well, yes, because the angle between them is 90 degrees or pi over two radians. And cos of pi over two is zero. 
So whatever the lengths are, this is going to be zero. So in this case, we say the vectors are orthogonal to one another. You could also say perpendicular. You could also say at right angles. But, you know, we're fancy people. We're going to use fancy words. This is how I like to say it. The vectors are orthogonal to one another. In other words, they're at right angles. Okay, let's do another example. Let's do V equals uh, 1, 1. And W equals 1, 0. And let's draw the picture first and see if we can figure out what the answer is supposed to be. Here's 1, 0. This is W. And here's 1, 1. This is V. You can see the angle between them is 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians. Um, let's check. So the dot product v.w is uh, 1, 0, 1 plus 1 times 0, so 0. So overall that's 1. Okay, so let's see. The theorem says this is supposed to be length of v times length of w times cos of the angle. What is the length of v? Length of v is, by Pythagoras' theorem, square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. 1 squared is 1, so that's square root 2. Length of W is, well, it's just 1, right? There's only uh, one entry, and it's, it's 1, so. So the length of W times the length of V times cos theta is square root 2 times 1 times cos theta. So what we're saying is uh, 1 equals square root 2 times cos theta, or cos theta is 1 over root 2. And if you remember all your basic values of sine and cos, um, which I rarely do, then you should be uh, satisfied that cos of pi over 2 is pi over 4. Sorry, <laughs> cos of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. So this is consistent. And the point is, like, if we didn't know, if we couldn't see from the picture what the angle was, we could still have figured out what theta was, because theta is cos inverse or arc cos of 1 over root 2. Now, you might object inverse cos or arc cos is not a well-defined function it can take several values so you know this could be pi over 4 but it could also be 3 pi over 4 or minus pi over 4 or basically infinitely many other things uh, you know if you allow angles to be just arbitrary real numbers rather than necessarily living between 0 and 2 pi um, but you shouldn't be worried about this um, because what this is saying is, um, here's our vectors v and w. You can measure the angle like this, but you could also measure the angle between them like this. It's, it could be this one, right? Or it could be uh, like this one measured in the opposite direction. And somehow that would introduce a sign. So that's why there's all these different possible values. It depends on, you know, exactly how you pick the angle between them.